Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. So I'm in the process of putting up some of these Cheerios <clears throat> that I uh, bought on sale a while back. And they're about a week or so away from the expiration date. I ended up uh, fitting about four of these boxes. These are the big boxes, the 22.7 uh, ounce boxes. I guess you can call it family size. And when I purchased these, these were part of one of my payday preps, if you guys go back and take a look. I remember paying something like $1.49 per box. So I ended up buying like 10 boxes. We were down to six. And I was able to fit four of these in a five-gallon bucket lined with a Mylar bag. And I wanted to show you guys the process by which I store these for long term. All right. I know I've done some of these videos before, but I've been getting a lot of questions, more than likely from newer subscribers. So I just thought that I'd do this quick video and also answer a question from one of our community members. All right, that's a pretty important question, you know. But uh, I wanted to show you guys how to do this real quick because it's so easy to do and it's not intimidating at all. And it doesn't cost a lot of money to do it, especially if you're putting away things that you got on sale. Okay, so the amount of money that I spent on the contents that I'm storing for long term is actually about the same that it cost me for the bucket and the Mylar bag. Okay, so it's not really a huge investment. All right. Having said that, I wanted to let you guys know that the way that I store things is not the only way. There's other ways of storing foods for long term. All right. This is just the way that I've always done it and it's worked for me. So I'm going to keep doing it this way. If you guys go take a look at Bug Out Bubba, all right, Bug Out Bubba has a prepping channel and he does his long term storage completely different than what I do it. But you know what? It might work for you, all right? I rather do it the way that I've been doing it because I know it works. And the way that he does it, there's a couple of things that I don't 100% agree with, but that's okay. You know why? Because it works for him and that's what matters. He does what works for him. And that's what you have to find out uh, by not only looking at my channel, all right, but by also visiting other channels and taking bits and pieces from each place that will give you an idea of how you can do it best uh, for you, okay? You don't have to do it the way that one person does it, all right? That's what I like to do. I like to visit different channels and see how different people do different things. And then I, I may or may not adjust the way that I do the things that I do, uh, depending on how I feel uh, that the process that they undertake uh, goes, whether I think it's better or worse or whether there's a part of the process that, that I think would work better. So that's what I recommend that you guys do, all right? So go check out Bug Out Bubba and uh, see how he does his long-term storage for dried goods, all right? He does some dry canning and he also stores things in buckets for long-term. But like I said, uh, in both instances, in his dry canning methods and his long-term long storage methods in buckets, it's way different than the way I do it, okay? So I encourage you to go give, give a look and see what you guys think about his methods. All right, so like I said, I was able to fit four of these boxes in this bucket, and I had a little bit of room, so I ended up putting about 10 or so packets of Quaker Oats uh, maple brown sugar, which is my favorite. So I put these away and I left the, uh, we, bought, we bought one of those variety packs a while back. And uh, Miss Alas Mrs. Alaska Prepper likes the different flavors. She likes the apple cinnamon. I like the maple brown sugar. So uh, the packs usually come with a little more maple brown sugar. So I went ahead and put some of these in here. Because uh, honestly, I don't eat these that often. All right. So what I did was is I just poked a few holes in the, uh, in the packets of the maple brown sugar oats. And I put them in there in their entire packet, okay? Uh, and like I said, if you can see the Cheerios in there, they're in the bottom there under the packets. And uh, that's four of those 22-ounce boxes, okay? So real quick, I'm just going to go over really quick how, uh, how to seal these up, okay? So the way that I do it is... I like to use an iron. So, uh, just a second, I'm going to cross the camera here so you'll probably see me crossing through here. The way I do it is I like to use an iron 
to seal these up. Now, you can use different things to seal these Mylar bags, okay? I've seen people use hair straightener irons, you know, the irons that some people use to straighten their hair. I've seen them use those. I personally would rather not use that. Uh, I've always been doing it, I've always done it with an iron, and it's always worked. And why go buy another piece of equipment when I already have something that works, okay? Uh, there's also machines out there that you can purchase that are made specifically for sealing mylar. Uh, same story. Uh, why go buy something that, you know, that's going to perform a function that you already have something at home that you can do it with. Now, if you don't have an iron or you don't have any of those things, I would recommend just go to the thrift store and go buy yourself an iron for a dollar or two instead of buying a brand new one. All right, but you can definitely buy whatever it is that you want as long as this gets sealed. All right, so really quick on the cost. Uh, the bucket cost me, I think, about $3.50, and I also purchased a lid. I like getting my buckets and my lids from Home Depot because the lids always come with a seal. I'm not sure if you can see there or not, but the lids always come with a seal, and I noticed that the lids that they sell at Lowe's they don't come with a seal and they look like they're a lot more flimsy and these lids also uh, you have to actually break the seal when you when you go to take them off so they're pretty sturdy okay so these are the ones that I like using uh, I actually scored a great deal on buckets uh, a day or two ago and uh, I'll show you guys those on my next payday prep because those are part of my next payday prep uh, just so as you know, ladies and gentlemen, for my payday preps, I don't go out and buy everything the day before, right? I, I save a few dollars, and I look around and see if I can find something that, uh, you know, throughout the, through, in between paydays, I'll look around and see if I can find sales and things like that. Now, normally, I would put a 2,000 cc oxygen absorber in here, okay? That's what I would normally put in here. However... I ran out of 2,000 cc oxygen absorbers, and all I have is these 100 cc oxygen absorbers, right? So I'm going to put 20 of these in here, okay? So we're looking at spending roughly $5 for the bucket and the lid, and you're going to end up spending $2 for your Mylar bag and a 2,000 cc oxygen absorber, right? Uh, when you buy a pack of 10 Mylar bags uh, through Amazon, they come with 10 2000 cc oxygen absorbers all right if you guys want to take a look at those look at my links i have these exact same bags i think these are four and a half or five mil bags so they're pretty sturdy i have these exact same bags on that link you can take a look at them and see if these are the kind that you would like uh these bags are the best price that i found and they're also very good quality okay so I always recommend that if you're going to store something in a Mylar bag like this, to always make sure that you store it inside of a protective container like a bucket or a tote, okay? These Mylar bags are designed to uh, be non-permeable, meaning that they will not let air in or out, and they will not let light inside, okay? However, a rodent can shoot through this. All right, so that's what the bucket is for, okay? Now, if you're going to have this in your pantry, if you're going to say, let's say, for example, store something in your pantry uh, that you put in a Mylar bag and you just want to put it up on a shelf and you know that your pantry is pest-free, then pest and rodent-free, then you should be okay, all right? Uh, however, this is my favorite method of storing long-term food storage, okay? Because it's very safe against rodents, uh, it's safe against light and any air, okay? So pretty much covers everything that you need to cover, okay? So once you have everything in here, all you're going to do is you're going to throw your oxygen absorber in there, okay? In this case, I'm going to throw 20 of those in there, which is just as good, okay? Now, one thing that you want to remember to do before you put your oxygen absorber in there is you want to make sure that your oxygen absorber is good okay and one of the ways that you can check to see if it's good is make sure that it's pliable okay make sure that it's pliable and that the inside feels powdery if the inside feels hard like a uh, piece of bubble gum that's been sitting out for a long time 
this oxygen absorber is not good, all right? So that's the first thing you're gonna check before you put your oxygen absorbers in there is to make sure that they're good, okay? Now, once you open your container, you wanna put them in there pretty quickly so that you don't ruin the rest of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw 20 in there. Okay, now you're gonna close up, but let me close up my jar real quick. Okay, and this is the way that I've been storing my oxygen absorbers for a long time. Different people store them in different manner. I know some people put them in the freezer or refrigerator or they vacuum seal them back again in a bag. I've been doing it this way for years and I've never ever had a problem with them, okay? So, uh, just to let you know that this is how I do it. Now that I've got the oxygen absorbers in here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my bag ready. Now, I'm gonna try to have this here as even as I can, all right, on the end. I'm gonna try to get as much air out of it as I can, but you don't have to go through too much trouble of trying to get every bit of air, all right? There's times where I've seen people, and I've done it too, okay, where you can, where you can actually seal your bag all the way up to the end over here, right? And leave a little gap and then some people will stick a, a small vacuum attachment in there or a straw and suck the air out and then finish doing this but you will see that maybe next time I do a video I'm gonna leave this here in my house next time that I do a video I will show you what this looks like after 24 to 48 hours or so okay so all you're gonna do is you're gonna iron it ladies and gentlemen if you've ever ironed anything before you're just gonna iron this okay until it's sealed okay and it doesn't take long now some people have told me that or have commented in previous videos they've said why don't you cut some of the bag off so that you don't have that much bag and then you can use other portions of the bag to seal other things well just a second let me finish getting this so I can I can't do too many things at once ladies and gentlemen all right there we go so you see that is now sealed okay and you'll be able to tuck that in and put your lid on all right so some people have told me why don't you cut a portion of the bag off so you can use the other portion to um, uh, seal other things to put away other things well if you can as you can see this mylar bag right here I'm not sure if you can see this little tab right there it's got a rip tab it's meant to rip right there and take it off so if I were to open this in the future all right I would rip it right here and I would be able to take out what I needed and reseal it, okay? So that's why I like using my whole bag. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at this. You may be thinking to yourself, wow, there's a lot of air in there. Look at all that air that's left in there. Well, those oxygen absorbers that are in there, they're already working. And what they'll do is, is they, they are going to use up all of the oxygen that's in that container. 2,000 cc is plenty for a five gallon bucket. They're gonna use all the oxygen up and this bag will actually shrink in on itself, all right? 24 to 48 hours, you'll see this bag shrunk in on itself, okay? So I'll try to keep this in here and uh, maybe in the next couple of days, uh, if I do another video in the next couple of days, I'll lift this up and I'll show you what it looks like. It almost looks like you actually did vacuum seal it after it's done, okay? So then what I do is, is I wait for my bag to shrink in on itself for a couple of days. I just leave it in a corner in my living room. And then I'll come back and I'll label it with a Sharpie. I'll put the lid on it. I'll label the top of the lid and I'll go ahead and put it away in what I call deep storage. Okay, so that's what I do with this. And it's that simple. All right, it's not difficult at all. Absolutely anyone can do this, all right? And you saw for yourself, and it's not that expensive. Now, as far as the cost of the bucket and the lids, a lot of, of our community members have given us great tips as far as you can go to your local bakery, all right, and see what they do with their buckets and see if maybe you can buy it from them at a discount, okay? For me, it doesn't work very well because what they want to sell them to me for is not worth me having to clean them out being that i have to haul my own water okay they wanted to sell me the bucket and the lid for like a dollar fifty 
which is about three dollars three dollars and fifty cents less than what I would pay for a brand new but also the buckets are three gallon buckets instead of five gallon buckets and they don't clean them out they give them to you full of whipped cream or whatever uh, topping it is that they were you that you know was inside of it all right and they're all dirty and it would take me a long time to clean them so I just go ahead and spend the five bucks on the bucket and call it good okay so that's it ladies and gentlemen I hope that you got something out of this because this is very simple all right and very easy this is probably one of the easiest way to store your foods for long-term food storage okay this will extend the life of a dry cereal like this for 20 years believe it or not that's hard to believe isn't it but it will now whenever I'm storing cereals I make sure that I pick something that has the very minimal amount of fat in it and Cheerios are great for having a very small amount of fat inside of them okay I would never store any of those uh, sweet cereals like the Reese's that have the chocolate and stuff like that in them those have a lot of fat in them and more than likely it would go bad even though they were stored in a container like this with the oxygen absorbers because of all the fat in it so I concentrate on storing things that don't have that much fat okay and this is a great thing to have too many people don't think about cereals you know Cheerios is really or a cereal like this it, it's really a comfort food it's, it's something that can bring back in times of stress or distress. It's something that can bring back a little bit of that normalcy that your kids were used to, all right? And that's what we prep for. We prep for times when things are not normal, right? So you want to have things that are, pre you want to have preps that can at least give you a little bit of that normalcy back. All right. Not saying that it's going to make everything great the next day, but if you have a child who likes cereal, and uh, and I think that these Cheerios are not terrible. You know, they may not be the best because they're made by uh, you know corporations that are only interested in you know feeding you crap, obviously, uh, to make money. But I digress. Uh, but like I said, these kinds of preps are good for morale. All right. So. That's why I like to store these cereals. It's mainly for that. It's not really for the calories because, like I said, I was only able to fit four boxes in here. All right? It takes up a lot of room. All right? But this will bring back a little bit of normalcy for your family and maybe boost up a little bit of the morale. Okay? So now I wanted to go over it real quick a question that one of our community members had. All right? And they commented saying, I'm just starting prepper. I mean, sorry. I'm just starting to prep. Can you tell me how I should start? And you know what? That is a great question. You know why? Because this is where you ask that kind of a question in this kind of a community. All right? Uh, so I'm going to give you my two cents. And then I will rely on the rest of you guys to, you know, help out and, you know, add your two cents in the comments section. Okay? So this is the first thing that I say. And I'm going to use this can of soup, all right, as an example. So if I am not prepping and I'm just now starting to prep, this is what I would do. I would look at my pantry and I would see what I already eat, all right? And I'm going to use this soup as an example. But this soup is going to represent all of the foods and things that you already use on a daily basis, okay? That's what this, soup is, this can of soup is going to represent. So if in one week, let's say I go shopping for food every week. If in one week I use two of these cans of soup, all right? The next time I go shopping, now depending on your budget, okay? I'm going to I'm going to, you know, take into consideration that maybe the person who asked this comment or who had this comment and asked this question this comment maybe doesn't have a large budget, which is fine because anybody can prep on any budget, all right? So Let's say that you're on a low budget, but you go through two of these cans of soup every week. Well, the next time that you go shopping, if you look in your pantry and you see that you still have one of these cans of food, I mean soup, I'm sorry, you see that you have one of these cans of soup, uh, you only need one, right, to get through to the next week, to the next payday. So instead of buying one, you're going to buy two, which means that it's going to put you one can of soup ahead of what you normally use every week all right so next week when you go shopping again and you say well hot dog I still have two cans of soup and uh, 
I only use two cans of soup a week. You're not going to say, well, I don't need to buy any this week. No, you know what you're going to do? You're going to do what you normally do. You're going to buy two cans of soup. Now, you're two weeks ahead on your, on, on your pantry food, all right? You're already two weeks ahead, ahead because you've got the one week that you normally have, and then you have an additional week of food because you're now buying one more than what you need every time you go, right? So if you keep doing this on a slow and steady basis or a slow and steady pace, eventually you'll see that you have a month's worth of food, right? So if next week I notice that I go through one bottle of ketchup a month and I don't have any ketchup left, maybe I'll buy two bottles. Or maybe I'll wait till they go on sale and buy four bottles for the price of two. All right. The first thing you want to build up is you want to build up your working pantry. All right. Once you build up your working pantry where you have at least, now this is my opinion, uh, you know, other people may differ in the amount of time or the amount of food that they should have. All right. Uh, I would say that once you build up your working pantry, which means it's the pantry that you go to every day, that you take things out of every day, that you rotate every day. All right. Once you build up at least a six-month supply, all right, then you keep doing it until you build up at least a six-month supply, all right. Because now you're on, you're on a groove. Now you know. Now you're you're on autopilot. Now you know that every time you go to the store, you're gonna get at least one extra of something. Or whenever you see a sale, you may forego adding to your stock supply of soup this week to capitalize on the sale item that they're selling so you can get it less expensive and then maybe double up on your can of soup next week, all right? So get your working pantry up to at least six months worth of food, all right? Now that you have at least six months worth of food, and for some people it may be a year, all right? I think that a year is great. If everyone in this country had a working pantry with a year's supply of food, I think that would be incredible, right? It would be such a blessing for the entire country as a whole, all right? People just don't think like that, though, all right? Once you have at least six months, or if you're working towards a year, great, work towards a year, all right? But once you have your working pantry stocked up to where you're on autopilot and you already know what you're rotating and what you need to buy because you need to have at least these many cans of this or these many bottles of that in order to supply your household for the months, either the six months or 12 months that you're trying to reach, all right, then you're good. Then you just keep doing that, all right? You just keep doing that. And then the next thing that you want to concentrate on, you're going to want to concentrate on longer term food storage, right? You want to concentrate on foods that are going to last you longer than a year if you store them properly, okay? So then that's where we come to uh, building up your grains, all right? This is rice that I dry packed back in 2014. I don't know if you can see the date. Yeah, I dry packed these and or dry canned them in 2014. And uh, I put an oxygen absorber in there, ladies and gentlemen, just to 100 cc. And this rice looks just as good as it looked the day I packed it. Uh, given I have kept it in a cool, dry place and out of the light. Okay, so you're going to go and you're going to start packing up your long-term food storage. All right, like rice beans, all right, uh, any kind of legumes that you want, pasta, uh, oats, you know, grains, wheat berries, all of these dried goods that you know that if packaged correctly, all right, with an oxygen absorber and a pest or rodent proof container, you know, and stored correctly will last you 20, 25 years, all right, so that's what you want to do next, but at the same time that you're doing this, you're still keeping up with your working pantry, okay? And slow and steady wins the race. So I'm not saying go out and buy 500 pounds of rice and package it all up in a day. You can if you have the ability and the means by which to do that, but you don't have to, all right? You can, uh, if rice goes on sale and you can get a 20 pound bag of rice for $6, get it, all right? And store it up. All right, so you're going to concentrate on things like this that are long term, all right, but that you can get into anytime you want, all right, and then eventually you'll be putting away five gallon buckets of rice, all right. 
So, you know, this rice represents things that you can package yourself and store in a manner which will allow the product inside to last for 20, 25, 30 years, okay, depending exactly on what it is, all right? Uh, same thing with canning, all right? Uh, you can start canning your own meats. You can start canning your own vegetables, which will allow them to have a long shelf life, okay? So what I will say that this jar of rice represents is going to be your medium and long-term food storage. Medium-term food storage, I'm going to call you canning your vegetables, tomatoes, canning your meats, uh, dry canning your spices, things like that is what I'll say that this represents. That's what you're going to want to work on next. But remember that while you're doing all of this, you are still keeping up with your working pantry. You're still keeping up with rotating that food and replacing the food that, that you're using to make sure that you sustain or maintain a 6 to 12 month supply, whichever one it is that you're comfortable with doing or able to do. Okay. Now, the last thing that I would say as far as food storage goes is to get things, if you're able to, is to get some foods, not all, uh, okay? I know that Mountain House is expensive, but uh, I do believe in having a, maybe a two-week to a one-month supply of some freeze-dried foods, okay? Or number 10 cans, all right? Of foods that you can easily cook and prepare, all right? Because, uh, and of course, you're going to want to have these kinds of things. I took this one out on purpose because this is the Neapolitan ice cream that's freeze dried, all right, by Mountain House, uh, and it's just a freeze dried ice cream. So if you if you've ever if you've never had this, when you bite into it, it just tastes like dry ice cream. But it's literally ice cream that has been freeze dried, right? And it tastes exactly like what it's supposed to taste, like ice cream. All right. Uh, I just want to encourage you guys to remember that just rice and beans. Is not going to help you through this. It's, it's going to it's going to make you get food fatigue if you just stick to the basics. You need to have things to uh, help your taste buds get through the crisis as well. All right? Trust me. Uh, for you new community members, uh, a while back I tried living on rice, beans, and pasta. Uh, I was going to try to do it for a month. After a week, I couldn't do it anymore because I I got food fatigue. All right. And I got kind of constipated. <laughs> all right. So you're going to need some things that you eat now. All right. You don't have to get a lot of these things, but I believe that you should get a few. Now, why do I think that some freeze dried foods or at least foods that are really easy to prepare are pertinent to have at least two weeks to a month supply of? This is why. Because if we ever have to use our food preps, because we need to, because there's some kind of a crisis occurring, then it means that our normal stress levels will probably be a little higher than usual. So if we go into a crisis that's some kind of a systemic crisis, let's pick something easy. Let's say we have an economic collapse where none of the ATMs work, where the credit has been freezed. You pretty much, all you have is pretty much what you have in your house, the cash that you have, and whatever you have to barter with. That's pretty much all you have. You can't go to the bank, you can't use your ATM, you can't use your credit cards, etc. All right? Times like that is going to create a lot of stress. All right? Even if you're well prepared, times like that will create a lot of st stress. So for the first week or two, do you want to worry about creating a menu for your family? Or would you rather be taking care of things that you know you have to take care of in a hurry and then depend on some freeze-dried or some easy-to-prepare meals that you can just add boiling water to and you're going to get the nutrition that you need for the day, okay? That's why I think it's important to have some freeze-dried meals or some easy-to-prepare meals um, that are maybe dehydrated or freeze-dried. There's also other factors involved in why I think you should have freeze-dried meals. I think it, it, it's a, a good way to cook a meal really quick and without making a lot of smells for your neighbors to smell, okay? So if I were to take a pork butt and put it in my oven, my neighbor's going to smell it, okay? If I were to boil two cups of water and put it inside of a container with my freeze-dried meal, okay, more than likely 
those smells are not going to make it to my neighbor's apartment or my neighbor next door uh, or the house next door. Okay, that's another reason why I think it's a good idea to have some freeze-dried or easy-to-prepare meals that don't make a lot of smells. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know what? If I forgot anything or if you guys have any other recommendations on uh, how to easily start prepping, please leave it in the comments because I'm kind of like doing this video impromptu. I didn't write anything down. I didn't take any notes. I'm just going off of, you know, what is in the front of my brain right now. Okay, or it's in the tip of my tongue. All right, but I wanted to go ahead and and uh, answer that question, and uh, I encourage you all to please leave your recommendations in the comments. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I've already made this video way too long, so I have a very special announcement to make. Okay, and I'm going to continue to make this announcement uh, until uh, Sunday, or until Sunday's video. This Sunday is going to be a very special video. Okay, it's going to be only if I get my cheese making supplies or cheese or cheese supplies in the mail before then. I think I will because I order them, but I'm going to be showing you guys how to preserve cheese using wax. Okay, for long term food storage. All right, I've got someone who's been teaching me how to do it, and I am being told that if you preserve cheese, hard cheeses, you know, in this manner, that it will last anywhere between 28 to 38 years. Pretty much, it'll outlive you, okay? So that's what the video is going to be about this Sunday. However, ladies and gentlemen, this Sunday, we are going to have what I want to call a celebration, all right? And you guys will see why that is this Sunday. So please... Do whatever you can do this Sunday to be in the live chat uh, for a premiere. The video is still going to premiere at the same time that it always does on Sunday, all right? And we'll have our live chat. But I got some really exciting things to do with you guys this Sunday. And, and trust me, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to enjoy this immensely. This is going... Actually, I think I'm going to enjoy it more than you guys. But this is going to be probably my very favorite video that I've done since I started this channel. All right. So please do everything you can to be there uh, this uh, Sunday. All right. I know it's Monday and I'm already talking about next Sunday, but that's how excited I am about what we're going to be doing this Sunday coming up. Okay. So to all of you, if uh, I leave you a reply in your comment, please look at it. All right. Uh, because it may be important. All right, that's where I'm going to leave it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys had a good Monday today. I actually had a really good Monday today, uh, believe it or not. Uh, so, uh, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys want to support the channel, please just take a look at the links. Uh, there's many ways that you can support the channel without it costing you a penny. Uh, you can use my Amazon link. It won't cost you an extra cent uh, to pay for what you're buying using my Amazon link. Uh, if you can let an ad or two run through, that really helps a lot also. Uh, if you guys need precious metals, all right, if you already have all the preps that you need, all right, and you're going to purchase a precious metals anyways, and there are no precious metal dealers or coin shops near where you live, I do have a link for SD Bouillon as well, all right? But remember, I advocate people having precious metals only after they've gotten all the preps that they need, all right? I myself am not purchasing precious metals right now, not for a while, okay? I'm concentrating on food. Right? And I recommend the same thing for you. However, if you are in the market for precious metals and there's no coin shops near you, consider using my link. All right? It helps out the channel a lot, and I, and I would appreciate it. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I have gone on way too long. All right? I, I think I'm the only prepper channel on YouTube that can take a 5-minute video and make it into a 30-minute video. So having said that, remember to be good to each other. Remember that when good people do good things, good things happen. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? That is a fact. And I'm going to say it again. When good people do good things, good things happen. Right? Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper, and I'm out.